Yeah, let's get this thing started. Uh, I know I started uh, a little bit late, a couple of minutes late. I was heating up my lunch and sending off some emails. <laughs> so I was working at the same time. Uh, but let's get working into this word right now, all right? Yeah. Okay, let's get it going. So what I want you to do is I want to pray right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for everybody that's watching right now. Thank you for everyone uh, around the world that's watching. And um, I pray right now that their lunch is blessed and the hands that made it is blessed. Uh, <laughs> and I also uh, just bring joy into their heart right now, Heavenly Father. Uh, bring joy into wherever they're at, wherever they're eating lunch. And just let them know that they change the atmosphere. They change the atmosphere around them um, by bringing your joy to it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to see y'all up in here. Yeah. So on the West Coast, it's obviously lunchtime. Um, and then, you know, uh, if you're on the East Coast, it's like three or four. So you, you're getting close to getting off work or you might be on a break, your second break. Because people have two breaks, too, in certain jobs. All right. So turn to uh, Isaiah 55, verse 8 through 9, because we're going to get right to it. You know, this is a break to, you know, get with the Lord real quick. And then get back to work. All right. So Isaiah uh, chapter 55, verse eight through nine, <clears throat> it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Like I said before, welcome to Lunch Break Bible Study. That is God saying that he wants the best for you, all right? So I'm sure you all heard of verses, right? Verses, <laughs> verses with a Z, okay? You know, the epic Instagram battles created by Swiss Beats and Timbaland, all right? So uh, it's, uh, you know, where prominent producers go head to head to battle it out to see who's the dopest uh, producer and who got the dopest songs. That's what this all about. You know what I mean? And it's so fun to watch versus, uh, it was so dope that that happened during the pandemic. Uh, super awesome. I love watching them. I love watching all the different artists, uh, do all their songs and, and, and I'll be in there too, you know, commenting, uh, cause I know some of the artists as well. And then, uh, people have been having parties for versus, which is super dope too. So, uh, shout out to versus, but today I want to bring two words up to battle, okay? I want to have two words do a verses, okay? So I'm going to write uh, verses in here because I didn't put the name of the uh, title in here. So the name of the title of this is called verses, all right? So verses, and I want to take two words that I want to bring up for verses. Um, and so you can see the difference between the two of them. Okay. So one brings you closer to God and the other does not. All right. Uh, let's bring up guilt and shame, guilt and shame. All right. Now we tend to use these words interchangeably, right? But there's a big difference between guilt and shame. Okay. Guilt says I did something wrong. Shame says there is something wrong with me. Huh. God wants us to recognize our guilt, but live in the shame-free reality that we are wonderfully and fearfully made by him. Huh. Now, in, in this verse, as believers, we already know God has the victory. We already know it, the, the victory's already won, okay? And But the devil's still going to try to put his schemes together, right? So that's why we got to shine a light on how he tries to trap us, all right? And so we can avoid the trap of the schemes, okay? So um, good versus evil. That's what we're talking about, right versus wrong. OK, life would be so much easier if everything was so clearly defined. But oftentimes we find out that things are not so black and white in life. OK, and we can either deny it or we can learn to navigate through the gray areas. OK, learn to navigate through the gray areas and try to find the God, what God wants for us. Navigate through the gray areas and find out what God wants for us. Guilt and shame. The truth is, is that these words mean two different things, okay? One of them is from God and can actually be a benefit to us. And the other is not from God 
at all. It only brings pain and discouragement, okay? Today, we're going to read the story that is um, familiar to many of us, okay? A group of religious elite. Okay, these were the ones that felt like they were educated in religion, in religion, right? They came to Jesus hoping to trip him up, right? They were trying to trip him up. <laughs> they, they brought with them a woman caught in adultery, right? And um, a woman in this society did not have equal rights at all back then, all right? And women would had, who had sinned sexually pretty much had no rights at all, okay? So the law allowed them to kill the sinful woman. This woman was less than nothing to the man who brought her to Jesus. So, but when she encountered Jesus, she also came face to face with her own value and worth. Okay, this is about to be deep. I'm about to show y'all the difference between guilt and shame, all right? Peep this out. Turn to John uh, chapter 8, uh, verse 2 through 11, all right? Verse 2 to 11. Yeah, and this is lunch break Bible study, so we eating. <laughs> feeding our spirit and um, feeding our mind, okay? In our belly. So let's get it. Uh, John chapter 8, verse 2 through 11. And it says, At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the peoples gathered around him. And he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were using the question as a trap in order to have a basic accusation in accusing him, right? And accusing, for accusing him, right? But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. He started writing on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Mm. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. So he just writing on the ground. He ain't even listening. He writing, on, he writing on the ground, right? Let any of you who is without sin be the first to throw the stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first. Until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked the woman, where, who, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Mm, wow. Wow. Now, I read this and I kept wondering, like, Okay, what was Jesus writing in the sand? That's what I was wondering. Like, what was he writing in the sand? And I started searching around because I was like, okay, well, what was he writing in the sand when he wasn't looking at them before he said, you know, who, who was not sin among us, right? So he was writing in the sand and I was thinking like, okay, what was he doing? So I started looking around and some people feel that he was writing down the Pharisees' names, okay? Possibly writing down their sins in the sand. Okay, now this theory is based on Jeremiah 17, uh, chapter, seven, uh, chapter 17, verse 13. Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. In this preceding chapter from John, Jesus spoke of himself as living water. So perhaps he was fulfilling a prophecy. All right. And he was writing down what they had seen and what they had done. And they saw that in the sand. OK, that could have been an, an idea. All right. Others believe it was a demonstration of God. The father did when he carved the Ten Commandments with his finger that Jesus had the authority to issue to new commandments for us to love one another as he loved us. Now, that's in John chapter 13, verse 34. Love one another as he loves us. So a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another and to bear one another's burdens as indicated by Paul in Galatians. He says that carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Meaning that's in Galatians chapter six, verse two, meaning be understanding, have empathy, um, you know, show love. And, you know, no one knows what he was writing in the sand. It's a lot of people that was given ideas for that. Maybe that could have been what he was doing. But one thing we do know 
is that the woman was forgiven when it was only Jesus in her standing there. She was forgiven. She didn't deny what she did. She didn't try to argue or justify her wrong. Okay. And Jesus said, then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. Meaning you are forgiven. Stop what you were doing and live a righteous lifestyle because you do not want to keep living in trouble or in sin because of the wages of sin is death, right? And what Jesus did was show compassion. He showed compassion and showed the woman grace, love, and how God still loves her and wants her to do right. (laughs) <laughs> now, back to the difference between guilt and shame, what I was talking about, the verses between guilt and shame, okay? So guilt is the realization that you have done something wrong. This woman was guilty, committing adultery, right? But shame is the sense that you are wrong, that because of what you have done, you have no worth, have no worth. The religious elite saw something shameful when they looked at this woman because of her sin. She was worthless in their eyes. She had no value except as a pawn that they hoped to use to trap Jesus into an awkward situation, right? But Jesus would not play along. He wasn't going to put the woman to death. He has no part with shame, okay? Shame is of the devil, okay? Shame is of the devil. Shame is a lie. It distorts the truth of God that tells us you are a treasure created in my image. Whoo! To say, because you did something wrong, you are worthless. That's what shame is doing. Jesus offers the woman compassion and gives her a glimpse, you know, of her value in God. Jesus never pretends that she did not sin. He didn't do that. He didn't pretend that she didn't sin, but he lets her know that he does not condemn her. Okay, she's not going to be put to death. He's not going to disregard her. He hasn't forgotten her. Guilt is the thing within us that lets us know that we have fallen short of the glory of God. Guilt comes from God. If we had no sense of our own guilt, we would never see our need for Jesus. Right. If we have any guilt, our guilt compels us to seek forgiveness at the cross. That's why we go to God, to seek forgiveness at the cross. Our guilt leads us to confess our sins to God. And when we do that, our sins are forgiven. Mm. Our guilt hits the road. It it is a done job. See, but shame tells us the lie that we are nothing. That's what shame does, right? We look at our failings and deem ourselves worthless as failures. Shame tells us that God's forgiveness is not enough. That's what shame says. Shame says you'll never amount to anything. That's what shame does. Don't allow that to happen. No. See, if you take away anything from what we're talking about today in Lunch Break Bible Study, what I want you to know, take away this right here. Shame is a liar. That's what shame is. Shame wants to drag you out into the street and have you stoned, put to death. But that is not Jesus's way. He does not condemn you. He is here with you. Woo, that's a bar. He does not condemn you. He is here with you. Okay? He stands with you in the midst of your shame. And in time, his truth will break through and destroy the power of shame's lies. Hmm. The stone will drop from his hand and he will slink away until it's only you and Jesus. Shame will slink away. And it's only you and Jesus. Everyone drops their stones. There is no condemnation or condemnation. There is no condemnation, not condemnation. There is no condemnation with me, he tells you. And when you consider all that Jesus did to free you from your sin, you will see just what a treasure you are to him. Everyone is a treasure to God. Everyone was born for a reason. Hallelujah. Okay, so look. I want you to also catch something because as I was studying this and I was I was into this, I want you also to catch this. The people who was trying to kill her were also the people that brought her to Jesus. <laughs> Y'all peep that? Y'all peep that? The people that were trying to stone her and to kill her are also the people that brought her to Jesus. It had to happen so she could be set free. 
Okay, imagine her thinking, oh God, they're about to stone me. They're about to put me to death. And then she sees Jesus up ahead, okay? And because she is now in the presence of Christ, she has been set free because she is in the presence of Christ. She has been set free. It is in his presence. It is in his presence. Write that down. It is in his presence. Him being around you, you accepting his love. And when she saw all those men leave, you know she decided to renew her mind at that moment and change her ways at that moment because at that moment she was set free. She was set free because she was in the presence of Christ. No more lies, no more judgmental attitude, no more death talk, no more harm. That type of behavior cannot stay around Christ. That's why they left. You know what I mean? That's why they left. They had, they had to look at themselves and look inside and go, wow, okay, I have sinned. I have sinned too. Okay, let me walk off. Because the truth is in Christ and in the presence of Christ. The truth is there. <laughs> it is powerful and his love is everlasting. <laughs> and his presence is everlasting and his love will never change. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death, set you free from the law of sin and death. Get in the presence of Christ. Get around Christ. Change your ways when it's when it comes up. Don't run away from it when it comes up. When you feel that guilty feeling and you're saying, man, I need to change my ways. That is your spirit going, okay, we need to change our ways. We need to turn to Christ. And in that moment, don't feel like, oh, well, what I've done, he can't love me. He still loves you and he is forgiving and he loves you. And he's standing there with an open arm and he's saying, I love you, okay? And I'm gonna be with you. And now do not sin anymore. Don't do the same thing you were doing before because now you know. You've come to me and I've told you how to do better and I've shown you grace and I've shown you love. Never feel like God is saying, mm, I don't want to talk to you because of what you've done. Go to him. You are valuable to God. That is the message right now for this Bible study. You are valuable to God. And you are valuable because God said so. Mm, mm, mm. You are valuable because God said so. You know, I want you to all to write that down. Say, I'm valuable because God said so. Write that down. Put it down somewhere so you know, you know that you are a treasure. And you were born for a reason. So no matter what you have done, and if you feel guilty about it, go to God. Confess your sin. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Okay? And you can be renewed. Renew your mind and be set free. And be set free. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Woo! Lunch break Bible study, y'all. Lunch break Bible study. So check it out. This is what I want to do. I want to do this right now because somebody could be watching this and they're going, hey, you know, I hear what you're saying, Pastor Kill, and, you know, I want to be set free. I have done some things in my life and I, I have uh, uh, done some crazy things and I, and I want to come to Christ. So I want to give you the opportunity to be able to do that right now. OK, so let's do it. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. OK, so bow your head and say, <clears throat> I am a sinner. But I do not want to sin anymore. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again. I believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. Jesus is my Lord and high priest. I invite you to him into my heart. You are Lord and Savior over everything I do. And today I am saved. Hallelujah. 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 If you did that prayer, hit us up. We want to send you some information. That is the salvation prayer. Okay, that is you inviting Jesus into your heart and inviting him into everything in your life. That is you being set free from the old you, from the sin, the craziness. Now Jesus is walking with you. 
So we want to send you more information. Okay, so hit us up at info at myspiritfood.org. Okay, info at myspiritfood.org. So we can send you some more information. Okay, now if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, okay, all you have to do is ask. Okay, all you have to do is ask. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, just ask. So if you have, you know, uh, given your life to Christ, okay, you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, because that's what it's about, receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So you just said that. And then you want to be baptized, you can hit us up at info at myspiritfood.org. We can baptize you as well. But then you want to say, hey, I want to pray even more. I want to pray even more. I want to pray effectively. I want to pray in the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is ask, okay? So repeat after me. Just say, Heavenly Father, you said that if I ask, that you would fill me with the Holy Spirit. So today, I'm asking. And when I ask, I will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Now just breathe in. Breathe out. Say, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And I receive it right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Say, I receive it right now in the name of Jesus. I receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's so important to do that and to learn how to effectively pray like that and to pray in the Holy Spirit. It's so important. It's encouraging. It's empowering us. And our spirit knows what to pray for even when we don't. That's why we do it. Okay, and that's so beautiful. And it comforts us. I talk about this all the time. When Jesus rose again, when he died on the cross, rose again, he wasn't in the tomb, but he stayed on earth for a while and he talked to the disciples, right? And when he went to the disciples, he told them, before I ascend into heaven, I want to leave you all with the Holy Spirit to comfort you to protect you as you are going through life and going through trouble. So as people are going through trouble or feeling guilty and going through situations like we spoke of earlier and then feeling like, oh, everybody wants me dead or I, I, I have so much shame. I, I don't even want to live anymore. No, Jesus wants you to live. Jesus wants you to live. Jesus wants you to be a testimony for someone else. He wants you to help someone else by coming to him and letting them know they can come to him too, all right? And speaking in the Holy Spirit is such a beautiful thing because it comforts us in the times of troubles and in the ups and downs. <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So check it out. If you want to be able uh, to give an offering, to give a tithe, if you want to be able to do that because we're watching online and uh, people are watching us all over and uh, we have tithers and I'm a tither, uh, text MYSFCC, MYSFCC to 833, I'll go slow because it's a long number, <laughs> text MYSFCC to 833-245-7382. Um, yeah, that's been, it's been awesome, y'all. It's been awesome. Another fun, quick lunch break Bible study. Woo! So I'm going um, to end it with some prayer. Uh, let's do that real quick, okay? I'm going to end it with some prayer. <clears throat> Say this. Drive out the shame from our lives so that we may see our value in Christ. I'm going to say that again. Drive out the shame from our lives so that we may see our value in Christ. <laughs> in Jesus' name I pray, amen. You are valuable to God because God says so. You are valuable to God because God says so. Hallelujah! Hey, let's break Bible study. <laughs> Hallelujah! I love y'all. Y'all have a blessed rest of your day. Shout out to Mark Stevens, preaching for your love. Uh, had to run his back. Woo! Hey, I love y'all. Have a blessed day. Hey.